is Steve Zeltzer with Work Week, and we have been covering the struggle of the Namibian Rossing Miners branch, who were fired by the Chinese National Nuclear Corporation, which owns the mine in Namibia. And they have been engaged in a long struggle uh, to defend themselves uh, and to defend the branch leaders who were terminated and, and to fight for the right to have a union at the mine. And this mine is uh, very important historically in the history of Namibia because it's one of the centers of union organizing and fight back against apartheid, uh, against South Africa control of Namibia uh, during the apartheid regime in South Africa. So this mine has a very important historical relevance uh, to the people of Namibia, the working people of Namibia. So welcome to, to Work Week. Thank you, Steve. Thank okay, you. why don't you talk uh, about this? You, you've been, you were fired by the company. You, you went to arbitration court and the hearing, and then there was a, an attempt by the company to take it out of the arbitration uh, court. Why don't, what happened in this ruling that happened yesterday, and why is that important? I will uh, explain. The, right from the start, uh, we discussed it. And um, we came to the conclusion that uh, uh, it, it was, it might, might have been a good thing that they took it to the labor court um, uh, because they were trying to waste time. They are trying to drag their feet. Uh, and uh, normally when uh, the ruling classes uh, waste time, that is when they, uh, they plan uh, uh, Strat uh, tactics and uh, so on to uh, to launch their, their their attacks or to consummate their attacks. And um, what they tried to do, they short circuited the process. They could have uh, continued with the arbitration, and if the 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 uh, verdict was against them, they could have taken it on review uh, or on appeal to the labor court. And if they had uh, failed there, they could have taken it up to the Supreme Court. Now, our judicial system is extremely corrupt. We would consist mainly of corrupt individuals uh, with here and there uh, 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 professional judge. Uh, Parker is actually one of them, but Parker is from Ghana. And what they do in these uh, parts of the world, if you are in a precarious position, most of these African countries are in precarious uh, social, economic, and political situations. So that people who come from there, uh, when they, they find themselves in the clutches of uh, the uh, controlling cliques in this country, whether it's in, in the government circles or in uh, judiciary, you have to toe the line. There's also um, a legal fraternity from the colonial times that is effectively in charge. Uh, and what they have been doing in the past with uh, professional uh, judges and uh, jurists is that they expected them to toe the line. Uh, and if they did not, then they mobilized against them and tried to oust them. With the result that uh, these uh, people, there's uh, one very brilliant judge from Zimbabwe, Tambanengwe, uh, was also involved in the liberation struggle. And uh, this person, was uh, persecuted by the law society and by the society of advocates and by the, generally by the legal fraternity, the uh, white legal fraternity here, who is in control of the black upstarts. Uh, even though the blacks are uh, uh, ostensibly in charge of the judiciary, but uh, it is not like that the driving drivers behind the machine uh, is the old colonial uh, uh, um, fraternity. Uh, so, but uh, we have formed a united front 
consisting of our party, of two other parties, three other parties. Yes, uh, three other parties, uh, some of whom are fairly lame. They, uh, we are dragging them uh, by the scruffs of their necks. They are scared of us, but they are also scared of the, the status quo. Uh, but nevertheless, they found some sort of courage to join us in a united front. Then we've got various organizations, including the uh, Rossing uh, branch executive uh, in this united front who is addressing the corruption in the judiciary. Uh, Parker today gave a, another judgment uh, which puts this uh, judiciary in further crisis because it is the exact opposite findings of two previous judgments that were made around electoral math uh, issues. And, uh, but those were things that we fought and uh, I think uh, Parker succumbed to uh, our analysis of the situation, but uh, that's for later. Well, the, that getting, I'm getting back to the, the specific issue. Why did the, did the company try to go to this labor uh, court to avoid this arbitration? Uh, yeah, this is, the, uh, this is exactly why I, I tried to explain uh, 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 this fight against the corruption. The corruption is so widespread that they went to the labor court in the hope that they could tap on the corruption and the control that this existing uh, 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 fraternity has on, on it. But what is hap happening, happening here is that we are putting an enormous pressure on them, um, on the judiciary for making all these incredibly uh, depraved uh, judgments and so on. Uh, uh, you must have seen many of the things that we send around. Uh, the, it's just unbelievable. Uh, but as I've said, they are going into a, a, a crisis. Now, what happened is that they expected to go with no merits and to actually get the court to decide that the whole case should go on review, which would have taken two, three years in the labor court. And which means that it would for all intents and purposes suspend it, the fight in the labor tribunal. And the reason the labor tribunal is the place where all the issues will be addressed. But if it went on review for uh, irre purported irregularities. It would have dealt with technicalities and not with the uh, political content of the whole matter. That is why it is an enormous victory that, uh, that we scored today because it means that this case will now be put before the nation. And uh, the uh, merits of the case will be heard. And the Chinese have no merits, which means that in the next two or three months, and even maybe less, uh, but I suspect we'll, uh, I'll uh, give it uh, estimation of three months, we would have placed every issue in this whole thing before the working class around the country. And um, that is the positive thing, that they tried to drag the matter out. They have actually seriously short-circuited the whole process and allow its merits to be heard. That is why this uh, yesterday's uh, verdict is, uh, is, is such an important verdict in favor of uh, the branch. Okay, well, I, I want to thank you. We've been, uh, that's Haywat Bukes, who is the l lawyer for the fired mine workers at the Rossing Mine Branch. And also joining us on work week is George Martin, who is the uh, secretary of the Rossing Branch Union and 
George, you were pretty elated about this decision. Why don't you talk about the kind of conditions you faced and this battle to get justice after your firing, I believe, in September? Thank you, Steve. I'll start off with it is it it, it has been a hectic road for us or struggle. Um, starting off with all the witch hunt charges that we faced from the company right through to the to the unprocedural and unfair or unlawful uh, disciplinary hearings that they subjected us through. And then on the 29th of September last year, we were, we was, we were dismissed. Now, when you look at this, Steve, um, it's not easy to lose your job um, without planning to lose it. Sometimes uh, people resign, you plan for it, an unfair and unlawful dismissal is something you, 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 just, you just have no control over it because it is, it is forced upon you. And immediately circumstances have to change, you have to readjust and everything. But uh, the one thing that, that, kept, that kept us strong is uh, the team that we have, the nine of us. And then we, we, we managed to build Solidarity fronts with, uh, with solidarity supports with uh, Comrade Yewat, yourself, Steve. We have uh, Comrade Bob, so and and Comrade Nick and Brownwen, Carol. I can name I can name a few, and a lot. And uh, those are the supports that we have. Um, I'll I'll go on uh, right through to the first um, arbitration hearing that was scheduled on the 14th or 14th, 15th to 17th December uh, 2020 uh, to come to, to that hearing and hear that it was postponed or it, it has to be postponed, um, set us back again to say, why would something like this happen? Because you have put up all your energy and you want justice and just to, to come on the hearing date and then justice was delayed. Again, uh, uh, commitments were made that a date will be set next year or the, 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 20, the coming year, which is 2021. And we set a date for, for February, prepared ourselves for the case again. And then the case again coming on that day, the case was again postponed. Um, it was a really a setback for us, but we had motivation. We had uh, strong rocks and strong comrades that would motivate us and push us through to say that all hope is not lost. It will, it must just build us or it must just make us strong. Comrade Yewat was one of those people that motivated us to, 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 to keep on fighting. And again, when we came for the third time uh, for the hearing on the, in April, the 19th of April to 21st of April, uh, we, we were so motivated to say that this is the last time that this case would be, would be postponed and we, we have to go into the case. And again, uh, the, 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 the company played another trick in their book to come up with these uh, delayed tactics to them, sending the case to the labor court, trying to break us, prolonging the process and showing us that I have the money as a company and I can do what I want. But again, as things work, the truth always comes out, Steve. And justice was really served uh, yesterday when Judge, when Judge Parker announced that judgment to say that he dismissed the case. And it's an, it's an overwhelming feeling. We feel so... We, we feel great. It, I, I, can, I cannot even describe the feeling I'm feeling today to say that at least it restored some, some faith in our labor, in our judiciary system to say that justice has prevailed on the, on the first step. So we are looking forward to going to the arbitration hearing um, and then we take it from there. Maybe Comrade Julius wants to add something. Yes, Julius, why don't you uh, speak about what you feel and and this whole battle, really, to get justice in uh, what was an illegal firing of yourself and, and eight other uh, union leaders of the Rossi mine. Thank you, Steve, uh, and fellow uh, comrades. 
uh, it has been a tough struggle from the onset. Uh, and currently we are wounded uh, as we are from, um, from the struggle. But uh, as Comrade George has men uh, mentioned it there, the determination has always been there. And we have, uh, and the, it's something that we have uh, decided as a group to, to, to say, we will stand uh, for justice until this matter has, has, has been finalized and hopefully it, should, it will be in our favor. And, uh, and, and just to send out the message to say, this fight is, is bigger than the nine of us uh, and uh, a win for, for us like the one of yesterday. It's a win for, 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 for workers uh, uh, around the country and even around the world. As Comrade Beggars has mentioned that we, we are up against a system that, uh, that, that's, that's rotten, but there are still some of those elements that, uh, that still have some, some, um, some ethics and integrity in them. So for us, uh, yesterday was, uh, was a victory. Uh, to say the least. At the end of the day, what we want is justice and uh, us going into the merits of the case. I think that's what we, that was uh, our, our, our main intention to say, the only way we need to fight these people, we need to, 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 make, to go into the match and bring the cards on the table. And uh, I'm not sure if, if the company still has uh, other tricks up their sleeve that they might try to, 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 to run away again from this. But to whatever the case is, we, we are ready. We, we have the support that we, that we have received from the fellow comrades, uh, like Comrade Steve, like the Comrade Jekes and uh, other fellow comrades that has really stood behind us. And that has been our source of, uh, of motivation during these times. As we know, uh, with these unemployment times and the crisis that we have seen uh, during this pandemic that has um, torn countries apart, it's, it's, it's not easy uh, to... to to be fighting, waging this war against these uh, big capitalists and these giants and these uh, big exploiters that are, that are here to, to, to destroy uh, uh, labor movements. But we, we, we remain determined and, uh, and uh, we just, uh, just close it off to say, we, we do thank you again for, for the support that you, that you have shown us uh, over this time. This is Julius Ashi Pala. And Julius, one of the issues that led to your termination was your fight of your union and your chapter against demands from the Chinese National Nuclear Corporation to actually give back concessions on your healthcare benefits in the midst of a pandemic. What did you think about that demand by, by the CNNC that they would say that you should give up on your healthcare benefits, the good healthcare benefits that you had in the middle of a pandemic? Thank you, Steve. When it comes to health, health is, 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 is of paramount importance to, to to, to every individual, regardless of a worker, even just a, a, a citizen, health, health is key. And we have seen what, uh, how much important health is during this pandemic. So when it comes to, to, to us having to, to compromise on that, we, we, we took a stand and, and, and it's, uh, we do not even regret the, the stand that we took. And we, we made it clear from the onset to say, there's no way we'll agree or compromise to, to, to something that is of less uh, that is less favorable um, to our employees, and uh, and mind you, the uh, the mining sector is 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 one of a health risk uh, uh, industries that we know all over the world. So uh, matters such as uh, the health uh, health benefits should should take uh, priority in in all whether it's the stakeholders, the shareholders, the employees that should be of paramount uh, importance. And the, and the medical uh, aid and provide, uh, provider at Rossing did not come on a silver platter. It came, it came through rigorous uh, processes that, we, that, that were intensified to ensure that the people have nothing but the best uh, health service provider. So uh, on that, uh, we, we remain just on that to say, there's no compromise when it comes to, to set, uh, matters such as health. And the issue of health and safety for mining workers is absolutely critical. It's a life and death question. What has been the effect in the mind for the workers by the action of the CNNC, the company, to basically get rid of the union leadership? Has that had a, a bad effect on health and safety, fighting for protection for the workers who are remaining in the mines? I think Comrade George can assist me if I, uh, in this case. But uh, I think what's critical is uh, after our dismissal, it, it brought fear and it instilled uh, a lot of panic into our members. And uh, some of these issues were issues that we took up on, uh, on the highest level when we, when we were still the executive. So we, with time, we, 
we, we have seen that some of our members, uh, employees do contact us on, on, in our personal capacities, uh, seeking for advice and, and, and assistance. But it, it does come uh, clear that uh, our imp uh, members are not as comfortable as expressing their concerns as, uh, as they used to during uh, our time that we served as part of the executives. And it really, uh, and our, they do need assistance in terms of, of bringing, coming forth and, uh, and highlighting all these issues that they might be, be, be experiencing. Uh, I guess in our case, we were more radical and, and, and we were vocal. So the company could not get away with some of these things. But uh, at, at the time like this, when our employees uh, are facing a fear, it, it might be hard to even uh, know of any safety issues uh, because they are not uh, comfortable to, to, to bring them to our attention. And there was, as George said, there was no, uh, you know, warning that you would be terminated. Uh, what has been the effect on you and your family? Because, uh, of course, losing your income and a high unemployment rate of 50% in Namibia, what has been the effect on you and your family and other unionists? Uh, Just, uh, I'll, I'll give you a chance to me, George. Yes, uh, okay. uh, thank you once again, Steve. Uh, as you have rightly mentioned, the, the unemployment rate in the country is, is, is high. We, I have uh, applied for several uh, vacancies and I have not even, um, we, with my experience, my vast experience that I have of almost 10 years, I did not even get uh, uh, shortlisted for, for any vacancy. So this, this is just one of, uh, just a tip of the iceberg on, on what, what has transpired or, or the effect of the dismissal that, we, that, that came upon us. Uh, and on, on the day to day, we, we really had to make some drastic changes just to get by. Uh, as you know, we, we, some of us own houses. We do have some life covers, some policies that we, that we took out as insurance just for us to, to for, 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 for survival. But now we have to stop all of these things just to, just to have something, uh, yeah, just to have something to eat. And it has brought strain uh, in, in households as well as, uh, as relationships, even with our, ch our children, that, are, that are our kids that go to school, it, it, it has really put a, a major strain on us. And it's, it, at times it's, the, it's unbearable, uh, but unfortunately this is the situation we, we find ourselves in. And we just try to get by with the little that we have. And we've been talking with uh, um, Julius Ashipala, who is one of the, uh, union leaders of the Rossing Mine. Uh, George, you wanted to add to this? Before I add to what uh, Julius was saying on the on the strain, it, it put uh, the dismissal strain. I just wanted to add something on the healthcare. Um, mind you, Steve, um, the company had three to four attempts tried to change the, the medical scheme that we had. Um, you you they will they will go behind our backs and call in. A, a lower medical, a substandard medical aid to come and have presentation just to trick the workers in joining the, the medical aid scheme without us as the executive's involvement. Um, we, uh, 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 about a few weeks back, I'm talking about two to three weeks back, I was called by one of my ex-colleague that said that uh, presentations are being made by the company, they brought in this uh, lower medical scheme, apparently, uh, for, for, for employees to hear the benefits that they are going to have, to, to, to have if they join this new medical scheme, of which we all know are all lies, because you, you, cannot, you cannot go better than the, than the health provider that, that is currently, uh, that, the, that the employees currently have. So they... They just want to trick employees to, to reduce their medical scheme to a lower one. Uh, that's what I wanted to add. Um, again, on um, the effects of the dismissal, like my, like my comrade said, um, it is, it, it's, it's really hard. It's, it, you had to change everything um, from your grocery list to all the expenses. Like some of us had to cut on, uh, school fees for for, 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 our, for, our, for our kids and we we had to cut on some of the expenses that we had and uh, it's bad and we like 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 my colleague like my coverage said the the mortgages that we have 
um, we, may, we had to make pre-arrangements with the banks to say that um, if we, if we forfeit, forfeit uh, an installment, please don't be harsh on us because we are looking for jobs. Um, again, job hunting is not easy uh, because we believe that, or I believe that we were blacklisted and Rosing is one of the big companies uh, they belong to a chambers of mine. So they share ideas to say, blacklist these guys because they are troublemakers. Not, uh, not that we are troublemakers, but just because we belong to a union and uh, they, 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 they try to block your ways. You cannot even, there's no, when you apply for jobs, you are not even getting feedback to say that, hey, George, we've, we've received your CV. We'll, we'll contact you back. It's just, you apply nothing comes back you apply again for another job like i i had about 10 job applications that i put in and i my experience i i've worked for the mine for the past 15 years as a as a as an artisan and currently there's no job for me but you see every day in the newspapers that people are advertising for jobs but you you don't get an answer back that is a, a career suicide that this uh uh, CNNC put on us because everywhere you apply, the, the dismissal will follow you. So it's, it's very hard, Steve. And we've been talking with George Martin, who's the secretary of the Rossing Branch Local of the Mine Workers Union of Namibia. And this issue of Chinese investment in Namibia, uh, you're not the only mine that the uh, Chinese own. They also own... Uh, all the uranium mines now in Namibia and also many marble mines and there have been strikes and struggles at these other mines. So if you are successful in your struggle to get your jobs back and to stop this union busting, what would the effect be on the other mines in Namibia and uh, other workers in the country? Uh, I've been listening here, but the, uh, uh, as far as uh, the tactics and strategies in this matter is concerned, uh, the the importance was that now with this uh, verdict, um, the merits of the case uh, will now be on the cards and it will take many days uh, that uh, these things uh, can be uh, put before uh, the working class. But it must be augmented by a full scale campaign around the country to rebuild the union movement. It's not something that can stand on its own. And the dangers are not over. Uh, the, the strength, and this is what these comrades will have to simply, uh, uh, we will have to ask the international working class to assist in this because this is a, uh, in, at the same time, uh, uh, arduous thing, but at the same time, it's also a very golden opportunity of uh, resurrecting the union movement and uh, strengthening the working class movement around this country by uh, doing your mobilization around this uh, rossing issue. Uh, Comrade George has said that when we were still, I, I, George was, uh, Ashipala said, when we were still the, the uh, executive, they are the executive. They are legally the executive. They have not been ousted by the Chinese. And in this respect, and they've got a very good relationship with the mine workers leadership now, who is also under pressure. And uh, that is a different story. Comrade uh, George can uh, relate that what happened today, but uh, they are working together now and the road is open for them to go around this country while this case is going on and around this issue, mobilize the entire mining population together with the other sections of the working class with which they have contacted. Now, personally, uh, I will not allow this moment to go wasted. Uh, as far as we are concerned, our organizations, we are going to use this golden moment uh, to strengthen the working class uh, movement as far as we can. But obviously without these comrades uh, uh, being the main uh, 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 spear in, in this campaign, because as somebody says, they've got the agency. Now they have the agency, they can do it. 
in this time they must build the movement, it will strengthen both the case inside court and the court case inside should strengthen the movement outside. That's what I say now, they have to, they have to prepare a full budget and they must lay it before the international working class and uh, ask them to support this endeavor, but it must come with a full program. And George, uh, what would you uh, call on other unionist workers in the United States and globally to do uh, union locals, union branches in your support? The San Francisco Labor Council has uh, called for support. Uh, what kind of support do you need and what, what should unions and workers do around the world to support your struggle? The very first thing that, that, that we need from the international community is um, we, we need them to, 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 to fight against um, the capitalists that are out there to destroy the working class. Now, in our cases, um, we, we wrote a letter to, uh, to, to, the, to Pre Comrade Xi, the, the Chinese president. Um, up to now, we, we haven't had a reply from him. Uh, we need the international community to put pressure on Comrade Chi to meet our demands. That is first of all. Uh, the second one is um, we, 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 we are appealing on any fundraising campaigns that, 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 that can come from the international community. And uh, we also would like to be helped with, with our case, case preparation because the company comes with, uh, with, with these high top class lawyers and uh, <laughs> We, we, we also would need case studies and help regarding preparation on our case. Um, and to support our cause, uh, Steve, to, to not to give up on us and so that we can build an international working class that when tomorrow someone in the United States or a group of workers in the United States need some help, the working class is there to help out. It should not end with us. This should be a beginning of a working class movement internationally. And your union uh, branch union leadership has written a letter in solidarity with the striking United Mine Workers of America miners in Alabama. Why don't you talk about that letter that you sent them? Yeah, um, Comrade Steve, the first thing that I that that we learned as uh, as, as as the nine unlawfully dismissed is that when you are in this fight every little letter or every little message that comes to your side of support in solidarity, it gives you strength to fight. Now, when we wrote that letter, we, we, we wrote it from a point of view of us being in a situation that we need strength. And we wanted to, to motivate our, our comrades out there in Northern Alabama not to give up and to fight what is for their rights and to fight for what is rightfully theirs. So that, that was the motivation behind that. And we, and we want to build international relationships with, with these comrades so that we support each other whenever there's a struggle, Comrade Steve. And also lastly, let's, I wanted to talk about the effect of the pandemic because now I understand the pandemic is, is hitting Namibia again. Uh, what is happening in Namibia as far as the COVID pandemic and how it's affecting yourselves, your families, and the people of Namibia? Namibia is the highest rate uh, of uh, infections and death in the world at the moment, according to the statisticians. Uh, that is per capita. Uh, the uh, people you, uh, when you wake up in the morning, you have two, three people uh, that you know fairly closely are dead. Uh, in this past uh, two weeks, uh, there are so many people who died that I know personally. Uh, my family have had uh, COVID in uh, February and, uh, uh, but we survived. Uh, we did not have major uh, uh, complications. Symptoms, complications. 
but uh, the, it, it, people are dying, like, as they say, I don't like the word flies, but they are dying uh, heavily. Uh, and the public, in, in the public health system, I mean, how are workers being uh, protected? Uh, is, is the public health system at all exist to, to help people and, and also vaccinations? What is happening to protect the people of Namibia, the workers of Namibia from this terrible pandemic? Can I quickly just come in? Uh, sure. Comrade Steve, I, I listened to the, to the president's address today and I was quite impressed with, uh, with some of the work that has gone in to, 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 to curb or to, keep, to confine the, con the, the coronavirus. Um, one of the things that, that, that was said that was very critical is um, the movement, to limit the movement of people. So um, the, the whole country is on lockdown currently. Um, as you all know, or as we all know, Namibia is, was hit, is, we are currently uh, hit with a third wave. And uh, this wave is very, uh, the, the way it moves, it's very fast. You, you, you get infected two, three days, you are dead. So we, we, the country was left with no option but to, to close down. The, the, the movement around the regions. Uh, that is one thing I should applaud. Uh, the second, with regards to, to vaccines, um, the, the Minister of Health announced that um, currently we, we are running low on, on, on vaccines, but they, they, they ordered the vaccines, which are expected mid-July in uh, August, in, in August. So, uh, he, he, they mentioned about four different types of vaccines that are currently, or that, that will be available during the, the course of the two months. Uh, the, we, we currently had the two vaccines, the AstraZeneca and the Zinopharm. Uh, uh, they, they, they made a third one, the, the, the third one I don't know, and then the fourth one would be the, the J and J, Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Um, with regards to, to the death toll, this third wave have really hit us close. Um, when, when I speak about close, it's close relatives, close friends. Um, it's, um, it, uh, and, and one thing that I should really applaud the government is that they, they, they are putting in the, the work to try and curb uh, with regards, uh, the alcohol was 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 cut down from Monday to Thursday, so you can only uh, purchase it on a takeaway basis from from eight o'clock or nine o'clock to six o'clock, and then Monday, Friday to, to Sunday there will be no sell of alcohol selling of alcohol. Uh, restaurants will also be on a takeaway basis, and I think the one thing that I should mention, Steve. Um, since the third wave hit us, um, we, it was mostly people's behavior. We, we had, we had so we, we've seen videos on social medias where people are reckless. You, you, you go to a funeral of, of a person that died, maybe of COVID or not, you are there without a mask, you, 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 you don't regard social distancing, distancing. And those things are being loaded on, the, on, 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 on social media sometimes we, 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 we usually want to blame the government, but most of the times we are at fault also. We should take the blame and change the behaviors and then maybe, and that is the message that came. The motivation to, to send people to, to go for vaccine is also there. And we should start with ourselves to change the behaviors. Otherwise we'll not be victorious in this fight. And lastly, this is the, the, the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party. They're having celebrations in uh, Beijing and China. What, in, in relationship to that 100th anniversary of the Chinese uh, Communist Party and what is happening in Namibia, what do you think about that? Because it seems that your struggle, life and death struggle for, for your union, for the workers of Namibia is, is coming straight on against, as you say, Comrade Xi Jinping. Uh, who is uh, using money to fight your case, to prevent you from coming back to that, that mine as a leadership, the duly elected leadership. Uh, what do you have to say to the workers of China about your struggle and the relevance of the fight for workers around the world? Steve, the, 
from the beginning of this fight, we we don't have we don't have a fight against the Chinese people. In fact, we 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 work we we work with the people because we as workers must be united. Whether you are Chinese, American, Namibian, South African, we are all workers. We are all in this fight. That is the one message that I want to tell. But we are against the capitalist that wants to exploit the workers, that wants to set workers to fight against other workers. We are against that because um, you can never turn a worker against a worker because we speak the same language universally. So um, I would like them to fight on, to support their unions and and, and fight against capitalism, because it's it uh, capitalists never um, uh, uh, never saw eye to eye with 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 the workers. That is the message I have, uh, Comrade Steve. Okay, well I want to thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, we've been talking with the uh, lawyer for the mine workers union in Rossing, uh, Haywatch Bukes, and we've been talking with two leaders of the executive committee of the Rossing Mine. Uh, in Namibia, Julius Asfala and uh, George Martin. So thanks for joining us on Work Week, and we'll have information uh, on how people can support your struggle, workers can support your struggle, and build support so you have a victory and a return to the mine as the dutifully elected leaders of that local. So thanks for joining us on Work Week. Thank you, Corporate Steve. It was it was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay. Your you solidarity so far from Namibia is deeply appreciated. <laughs> forward and onward to go uh, west if you continue west you land in namibia if you continue east you will also land in namibia <laughs> <laughs> okay yes <laughs> 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 enough is enough yeah. <laughs>